Hello fellow designers, it's Karen of Karen Gwen Customs and I just wanted to share with you guys really quickly about a really successful prom consultation that I just had with a client who wasn't really 100% sure what she wanted her dress to look like and how we worked together to come up with her ultimate dream dress design. So when we had spoken before or texted before, she sent me this inspiration photo um, of a dress that she liked and what she kind of wanted to use as a starting point for her dream dress. So I look at it and I see uh, black and gold sequins, I see black rosette fabric for the train, and I see uh, gold rhinestone fringe on the shoulders. So I um, prepared some options uh, that kind of lined up with that. She said she was kind of leaning towards blue. Um, but once I showed her the options, because um, I, print, I print out the inspiration photo anytime I have a consultation um, so that me and the client can use that as a starting point of reference for our conversation. So I showed her some blue and gold uh, fabric options and she kind of wasn't really into it. She wasn't even sure what color she wanted. She wasn't sure what she wanted her dress to exactly look like. She was more so looking towards me as the designer to give her some direction. And while I can do that, that is a part of my job. It's also my job to come up with a, a perfect design for the client with their wants and needs. And thing that I ended up doing was I showed her this rosette fabric swatch sheet that I have. And I received this from New Rainbow Fabrics in Chicago. They mailed it to me. Um, so I kind of showed her because she knew that she wanted rosette fabric on the bottom. I showed her what all of her color options were to see if she was open to anything other than like blue or she also said black or pink. Those are colors that everybody wears to prom. So once I showed her this swatch sheet, she immediately gravitated towards this lilac -y purple color. And I said, okay, great, let's do that because not a lot of people actually choose purple for their prom dress. So right off the bat, we know that we're gonna be different. So this is the fabric that we selected for the bottom. Once she saw that she liked that, I then um, showed her and her mom pictures of dresses that I had done last year. There's one dress that I did last year, I'll try to insert a photo, but um, it had illusion mesh at the top so that it looks like it was an off the shoulder dress, but it really wasn't. And then there was a sequin mesh kind of going across the uh, top of the dress like so. So it looked off shoulder and then it kind of was uh, top stitch onto the skirt so that it wasn't a straight across cut. It was more of like a V cut. And then there was a spandex bottom and, um, the bottom had like horse hair, completely spandex, but she really liked the cut of that dress. So what we decided to do was to kind of follow a similar uh, idea with her dress. So we're going to have the um, sequin mesh fabric at the top, but instead of having it be off the shoulder, she wants it to be a V cut. It's gonna be long sleeve. It's gonna have the same, um, the same style of kind of a V cut that dips into the spandex bottom and then she's is going to cut off at the knee and go into a rosette bottom. So as we were reviewing all of her options, um, let me, I'm going to pull her contract out of my fashion designer planner and pattern package so y'all can see. Um, this is actually how I store my contracts. Um, this is an eight and a half by five and a half binder and I, uh, I get these half size, um, these half sheet page protectors and I keep every contract in the page protector. So any order that I have open right now, I have the contract in my binder. It's at my fingertips anytime I need it. So once we figured out that she wanted to use the rosette fabric uh, in purple for the bottom of her dress, I then went on Etsy really quickly during the consultation on my phone to uh, pick out some options for the sequin fabric for the top of her dress. And I showed her a few options. This was the one that she ended up selecting. Uh, it's an iridescent purple, kind of turns like blue or different colors when the light hits it. And then I have a picture of the rosette as well at the bottom. So I just pasted these onto the page, printed it out. I have a note that says for the top fabric, we're using that iridescent purple sequin. For the rosette fabric, we're going to use that color of rosette. And then for the skirt fabric going across the thighs, 
I'm going to first order the top and rosette fabric. And then once I get them in, see them in person, I'm going to then select a spandex in the appropriate color that matches well with them. I'm gonna get her approval and then I'm gonna go ahead and order the spandex or purchase the spandex. Now, the reason that I do that is because I don't wanna over promise a color combination to a client. There was an incident last prime season where I, I picked a yellow lace for the top of a client's dress and I told her that we have a yellow rosette bottom once the lace came in it did not match at all um, and since there, there was no like transitioning fabric in the middle so there was just lace and then there was rosette they were way too drastically different so there was no way that I was going to be able to use those two fabrics together now she really liked the lace and I ended up having to use um, feathers for the bottom because that was the only thing that I could find that matched the lace perfectly um, so that's how we're going to do her fabric selection for her dress um, and she did go ahead and make a deposit so I'm able to go ahead and start ordering her fabric and get that out of the way as soon as possible. Now, here is her contract. And I do my contracts on 8.5 by 11 paper on landscape orientation. Um, basically, up here um, at the top, she I have her enter her uh, personal information, um, her name, the date of her event, um, address, email address, things like that. And then um, I have different segments of the contract that I need the client to read through and initial. So the first section um, basically says, we're gonna use your inspiration photo as a starting point. I'm not making you an exact re replica of the dress that you uh, sent me inspiration photo of. And then terms and payment, I say that there are three installment payments. First is your non-refundable $50 consultation fee, which goes towards your dress. Second is a 60% deposit. And third is your remaining balance, which is due at the end of the dress process when you pick up your garment. So then I have spots here that say total cost, consultation fee, uh, deposit, and I initial and mark paid for the parts that she's already paid me for. We decided that her due date is going to be April 4th. Fittings and changes. I have a note that says one to two fitting appointments may be required before final pickup of your dress. When you pick up your dress, allow up to one hour for potential alterations. I also have a clause that says minor changes can be made at no, no cost, but if you make any major, major changes, such as if you want the shape or style of your dress to change, if you want to change your fabric, etc., there will be an additional cost, and I can't guarantee you that I'm going to be able to do it because I may not have time just based on how busy I am or how much time we have left before your actual prom. Um, I also have a refund cancellation policy saying that I do not do refunds or exchanges of any sort. Also a clause saying that this agreement is solely between me and the clients who signed the agreement. For example, if her cousin comes out of nowhere and says, I don't like this rosette at the bottom, it should have been something different. I don't have to talk to her and I don't have to change anything because I have an agreement solely between me, my prom client and her mother. Now my prom client's under 18 years old. So once I found that out, I told her to make sure she was bringing her mom with her. She was gonna come by herself. I told her to make sure she, she brings her mom because when you're doing a contract, you need a person over the age of 18 to sign that contract. Okay. It, I had my client sign all of these portions and then um, I had her mother initial next to her initials on every portion and also at the bottom where the client signed, I also had her mother do her signature as well. Now on the back, this is where I did her sketch. So as we were talking about her um, dress preferences, I was kind of just sketching it out as, as she was talking. So. We started with the bottom. We knew that she wanted rosette fabric, so I went ahead and sketched that out. Once she saw that other prom dress I did um, with the sequin top and the spandex middle portion, um, she decided on those. I went ahead and sketched that out. So that's her sketch. You can see I kind of labeled different things like where the um, sequins are gonna go, where the spandex is gonna go, where the rosette is. I made markings for how deep her cleavage is going to be. Basically took all of her measurements. These are all the measurements that I take. And um, so I had her sign this and then I had her sign the uh, fabric selections as well. And then she also made her 60% deposit. So I'm able to go ahead and get started as soon as possible. And I'll be meeting back up with her in March. So 
that basically was the consultation. I thought it went really, really well. I was able to really give my input on how I thought the dress should look. And we came up with something unique. We're gonna be doing this light purple that not everybody does. So I'm excited about it. I think she's excited about it and it went well. And um, that was my consultation summary. I hope you guys learned something. If you have any input on how you do your consultations or uh, any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time.